we have a just a couple more minutes. Uh, I want to give I want to give all our guests till twelve thirty to get logged in. Uh, we will start promptly at twelve thirty. I show twelve twenty eight right now. Thank you. And who's speaking, please? Uh, this is Jeff Allen. Okay, thank you, Jeff Allen. This is Sandra Rozier. Thank you. You're you're welcome. Jeff, I know I had a hard time logging in through the WebEx. So I ended up just calling in. I hope others aren't having the same challenges. Jeff, I think you're muted. I'm sorry. Uh, I am watching my my email in case anybody has any issues. And there is somebody right next door to answer any phone calls if somebody calls. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Okay, I have 1230 now, so we'll we'll go ahead and get started. I'm Jeff Allen, the purchasing and inventory manager for the Henry County Water Authority. Uh, this is our first uh, supplier conference. This is going to be a basic how to do business with Henry County Water Authority and the types of things we purchase. We're also going to discuss a little bit about our uh, local vendor preference policy, our uh, supplier inclusion policy, and our local sheltered market program. Uh, I'm Jeff Allen, the purchasing and inventory manager. Also with us today, we have uh, Jeremy Sledge. He's our inventory supervisor. He'll talk about the purchases for our for our uh, distribution and collection systems and the construction materials we purchase. And Gene Smith, I haven't seen him join. He is our purchasing agent. He handles a lot of the smaller uh, construction projects, our capital equipment. Uh, purchases and uh, and those sorts of things, and then Lindy Farmer, our general manager, is on here. He'll he'll have a few words about our programs in just a second. And then Joy uh, Walker is with Joy Walker Consulting. She's an advisor we brought in to help us develop our sheltered market program and supplier inclusion program. If I could ask everybody to please keep your microphones muted, we do have uh, a we do have plans to give you the opportunity to to ask questions at the end of the presentation. But please let us uh, please let us go through it first, and then we'll open it up to questions. So at this point, now that all the introductions are done, I'll turn it over to. Lindy Farmer, our general manager, and he has a few comments for us. Lindy? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, attending that can. Hopefully, we've got some other uh, participants online, Jeff. Uh, I'm not seeing, I'm seeing a lot of vacancies here, but. Uh, Yes, not everybody who signed up is on here with us. What we are going to do, I did ask uh, Dan Newcomb, our IT manager, to record this for us. So this is something uh, we can either post to the website or post to the uh, Facebook page or both uh, afterwards. Okay, okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on with it and everything. I, uh, just a few points that I'd like to touch on is, the local sheltered market program and the supplier inclusion program and the local business preference program uh, demonstrates the authority's uh, continuing commitment to all the businesses of Henry County and beyond in the metropolitan area 
in Henry County and surrounding communities. Uh, these practices formalize our longstanding practices of supplier inclusion and diversity wherever practice, wherever it's practical to do that. Uh, the community benefits when the authority dollars are spent with the businesses based in Henry County. Obviously, we want to plow back in where we can. And we're committed to the practices uh, and the principles of fair and equitable opportunities for all prospective HCWA vendors. Uh, we are approximately 100 businesses on our master, on our master vendor list that are located within Henry County. And we are currently using many of these businesses when purchasing goods and services. So thank you again. And uh, I'm pleased to be a part of this process. It's It's been a long time coming and we're trying to get there and, and, and share with each and every one of you and, and beyond how to do business with Henry County. So hopefully this is a, a good step in the right direction. Jeff, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Okay, thanks, Lindy. I appreciate those comments. I'm going to run through just a, a brief history of, of how these programs came into being. We started with this in the late fall of 2019. Our first step was the local vendor preference policy. Uh, for a local government to have a preference for businesses in its locality, that's relatively e easy to do. Uh, you don't run any afoul of any federal or state laws or regulations to uh, to say that you're going to show a preference to businesses in your community. The way that works is it's just a simple 5% preference we will pay 5% more to a Henry County business against a non-Henry County business. So if a Henry County business, if a non-Henry County business bids $100, a Henry County business bids $104, we'll pay the $104 and keep the business in the county. We feel that that's a small price to pay to, to support our local community and the businesses in it. In 2020, we began working on expanding the, the program further. Uh, and, and we had a lot of discussions internally about what we could and couldn't do, what made sense for the water authority, what the legalities of it was. And we decided in, in the summer of 2020, and everybody knows 2020 was a very challenging year, uh, with COVID and and everything else going on and large parts of the economy be, being shut down. So in September of 2020, we hired Joy Walker Consulting as our advisors. And they brought a lot of insight and a lot of intelligence as to how these programs could should work, can work, and what we can uh, what we can legally do. Uh, we spent the rest of 2020 and early 2021 drafting those policies. In May of 2021, our board reaffirmed the local vendor preference policy. And then in June, the board approved resolutions for the local sheltered market program and the supplier inclusion program. What we found was that we had to update all our all our forms and documents, uh, contract documents, bid forms, all of that to include local sheltered market. And then we began, uh, we began updating our website with content to that. I'll show you in a little bit how to find our website and, and where that information is. And then, uh, where, uh, We've begun bidding some contracts out in the local sheltered market. We aren't having a lot of success getting a lot of bidders right now. What we're finding is a lot of the companies that provide that do this sort of work are just so busy they aren't they aren't interested in bidding and getting uh, getting contractually tied to any one client. So uh, again, another COVID challenge, I guess. And we're, that brings us to October of 2021, where we're having our first conference. 
And now I will turn it over to Joy Walker, and she's going to uh, give us an overview of lo local sheltered market and supplier inclusion, and she's going to go over the forms and how to register. Joy? Thank you, Jeff. Um, my name is Joy Walker, and along with my team, we have worked um, with the Henry County Water Authority to provide um, counsel and guidance on implementing the um, supplier inclusion program and the local um, filtered market program. And so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to quickly go through the uh, nuances of this. Um, and um, I was going to take you to the website since Jeff is going to do that. I'm going to give him that honor and I'm just going to show you what the forms look like and tell you what we intend to do. Joy, you're welcome to, to go through the website. I'm going to just specifically show where the where we post bids and things like that. Okay. No, I was just going to take the, the, the SIP and the um, other um, important things in order to be registered um, through the application for the local sheltered market program. All right. So I'm going to share my screen now and um, take you to my PowerPoint. Let's, let's uh, discuss. What's going on? Okay. So these are our goals for this, for our brief moment in time with you. We're gonna discuss the sheltered market program um, with the program objectives, the application and the components and elig eligibility for uh, operating in this program. Talk to you about the importance of the a supplier inclusion program um, by defining the objectives and um, letting you know what the purposes of the disclosure form is and what your role is in making these programs a success. All right, so the goal is to provide a hands-on review of the Enact Local Sheltered Market Program and Supplier Inclusion Program and how this interacts with all the work that Henry County Water Authority um, is to bring businesses um, and, and quality goods and services to Henry County. All right, so um, we're gonna, uh, you're gonna understand after um, going through this uh, brief overview, what the uh, LSMPE, um, the local sheltered market program, the, and the, the supplier inclusion program is, what documents are required, how to complete the, the um, documents um, and submit them, where to locate specific items for completion, and, um, and how we evaluate um, that process. Um, Jeff did a wonderful job telling you the historical um, process of how, how we got we gotten to today, so I'm not gonna um, belabor the point. So let's talk about um, the Henry County vendor application. Anyone that wants to do business with Henry County must fill out a vendor application um, in order to do so. Um, that is a standard operating procedure, and that is um, not uh, inclusive. It's inclusive of LSMP and the SIP program, but they are in fact different things. Go back one more. All right. Standard, the um, Henry County uh, vendor application allows you to get a vendor ID number. It has the typical information you would have to be a vendor in Henry County. Um, and that is the taxpayer ID, the business name, those kinds of things. There's nothing um, out of the ordinary to be a vendor in Henry County. And to, uh, in order to be able to, um, and I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with. I'm going to stop the screen for just a moment and share with you um, how to get there from the Henry County um, website. Okay, so um, everything on the Henry County website is strategically located so that it's not difficult to find. It's not difficult to maneuver this website. Um, you look in about us. Go to procurement and um, click the um, the procurement um, information on the um, purchasing department page 
C, the LSMP local felted market application it is an application process and not a certification. Uh, the resolution that allows um, Mr. Lundy and his team to, um, to to be able to effectuate this program. You also see the supplier inclusion resolution and policy and that application. Most importantly, you will see the vendor application form that allows you to do business in Henry County. Very, very simple. Um, we're wanting folks to participate, and so we're not we're not hiding the ball. Let's go back. Okay. Okay, so what is the sheltered market program? This sheltered market program focuses on small business enterprises and veteran owned business businesses. And it, it takes out specific goods or services that are, that are only um, eligible for contractors that have a certain number of employees or a certain number um, of and a certain number of dollars annual income. Okay, the supplier inclusion program helps identify who we're doing business with, see whether or not we are being inclusive of um, um, of garnering support and awarding contracts to all members of the small business enterprise society. So, um, although the uh, supplier inclusion pro um, document is voluntary. We really need you as a contractor to provide us with this information so we can identify who we're doing business with to see whether our policies and procedures are inadvertently leaving us leaving someone without a seat at the table. Uh, more specifically, um, not only are there certain goods and services that are set aside or taken out to for these local sheltered market applicants, um, you have to meet employee thresholds and you have to meet uh, revenue thresholds. We don't, we're not catering to big business. We're catering, to, we're catering to the small local small businesses regarding the uh, local sheltered market program. Okay. So, uh, the local sheltered market um, consists of these 13 geographical count, um, areas located in and around Henry County. So the, the cities that are in and around these counties are included. And there are the folks that are uh, eligible to participate in this program. Um, the resolution has all this great legalese. You can read it for yourself on the website. They, this is what specifically uh, we intend to do, and we have started doing the process of identifying those goods and services that we can pull out uh, a, a market for our local um, sheltered market participants. So why implement an LSMP program? First and foremost, it's to promote um, Henry County and small business uh, contractor usage. Um, we also want to educate and advocate um, and 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 um, help by um, making the process a lot uh, less cumbersome to navigate. Um, we also want to show the diversity of individuals in Henry County and have that reflected in our uh, local sheltered market program and who we award contracts with that are qualified and are, are able to do that business. Um, it, also, uh, it also provides valuable experience and exposure to small businesses so that when we have larger um, uh, bids and uh, invitation to bids and RFPs that um, they need some subcontractors or other people to work on those larger bids, they will, uh, the, the larger contractors will um, make them make you available as a smaller contractor to help on some of these other larger contracts. Um, and so this also in, increases 
the ability for Henry County um, contractors, vendors um, to uh, continue to do business with Henry County so that we can put Henry County first. All right, so these are some definitions that, um, that uh, we are abiding by in the LSMP program. We've identified who a contractor is. We are identifying the term good faith effort because we're going to make a good faith effort in order to at attract qualified biz uh, businesses. These goods or services must be commercial commercially useful and um, so that we can make sure that we're getting the best bang for your tax dollars in Henry County and that we have the best qualified individuals to participate in this LMP program. All right, so what do you do? There's a formal application. Um, we, are, we have a specific focus area um, and that we're looking for small and veteran owned businesses. Um, you need to be in business or licensed for at least two years. Um, you, we identify you by specific commodity clothes, um, and um, you have to be the one that uh, is, is actually performing the services. We don't want anybody um, that is acting as a uh, illusory or a person up front and um, getting the small business, and then we come to find out that a, a larger company is um, kind of uh, staking them. We want the local Per, the local small business to get the benefit of this program. Um, we also have an annual uh, cap that if you're making over a certain amount, you cannot, uh, that you're not eligible to participate. Um, we're going to avoid any brokering or pass through contracting with this program. And uh, we are going to ensure that you are in compliance with every lo local, state, uh, and procurement uh, rules and regulations so that we can make sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Okay. So what do you need? Um, you need to fill out um, a vendor application. If you are already a, a current vendor and want to participate in this program, then we, we, we need to make sure that you put your vendor ID number on the application. Um, we want your email address, your website address, uh, any social media information so that we can see the kind of work that you've been doing to make sure that your what you what you've indicated to us is something that we can use. Remember the term commercially commercially useful. That's what tells us whether or not you are actually commercially useful. You must have a tax ID number and the e verify affidavit. E-Verify uh, is that form that requires any uh, person doing business with a governmental entity in the state of Georgia um, is um, monitoring to make sure that we don't have undocumented individuals doing the work. So an E-Verify is something that we must do, have to do, is required of us. That is Georgia law. And so we need to make sure that you have the E-Verify document. The E-Verify applications on the um, are on the um, the internet, um, and if you um, need access to uh, e firefly document, they're also on the Department of Administrative Services, the Georgia Department of Administration Administrative Services, and they can provide you with an e document. We cannot move anything along unless we have that e verify. You must have a current business license um, or registered in the um by the, at the secretary of state do business in one of those 13 counties that we previously noted uh and are denoting here we want you to at least pick a uh, pick at least five naics or nigp codes um we prefer the nigp codes but we will uh, we will take the naics georgia is um georgia's procurement measures are um more geared to the NIGP code, but what we do at Henry County Water Authority is geared to the NAICS codes. And so either one would, would uh, satisfy this requirement. We also need a company 
capability statements. What can you do for us? What have you done for others? Um, who, who you are as a company? I like to call that a firm resume. Tell me, tell me like you would do for a personal resume. Tell me what your firm can do. That is your capability statement. Um, we need an affidavit that that uh, states that your your company has has annual revenue of less than ten million dollars, um, because we consider anything over that not a small business. Um, and uh, if you are awarded a contract, then we'll ask for you to produce your um, federal corporate tax returns or your LLC's tax returns to reflect that. Uh, we need your certificate of corporate incorporation, your articles of incorporation, uh, including amendments or your articles of organization. If you happen to be a sole proprietorship, then um, you would have to give us that business license that speaks directly to your ownership of the company. All right, so on the website, I showed you where to get the local sheltered market program application. Um, it is a three page document that has a list of things that you need to you need to supply. I've listed those list of things. The, um, the document, um, and just because there's not a blank in it does not mean that we don't need it. That's just a separate document that you're going to provide to us. Um, it has the near name. Telephone number, so if you have a, a vendor ID, then we'll take that, your email address. It has a place for you to sign an affidavit and um, you, you're telling us under oath that what you have included in that packet is true and correct and to the best of your ability, uh, the information is true and correct. If there's something that changes in the meantime, please don't hesitate to update this packet but we need each and every um, bit of information to make sure that you are eligible to do business with Henry County Water Authority. Okay, so when, um, the, when what will the um, Henry County Water Authority do to um, identify if a good or service should be included in the LSMP program? Uh, and so here are the steps and the questions that are asked. Can the goods or services be procured from a, a qualified participant? Um, is, if that's yes, then that says, okay, we can look at LSMP program. If the LSMP a bid, is this item of service included on the Georgia statewide contract list or purchasing cooperative contract? If we answer yes to this, then it can't be an LSMP program necessarily because the state of Georgia requires us to consider those statewide contracts. Um, would um, the water authority be better served if we um, set it out to a competitive bid? Um, would, it, would, would, do we need multiple bidders um, that are not included in our um, program? Or is there only one person that we know that can do the, good, the, the services that are required or this is a um, finite um, issue with goods, something that is so technology driven that we can only find one person. Um, if we answer yes to that, then we won't, won't put it in the LSMP program. And we also have to look at price point. Now, I understand that COVID has made, made the, um, the participants, uh, meaning the contractors, the vendors, um, um, price point to go up because of the, um, the diminish the diminish, uh, number of employees they have, but we still got to be, we have to be fiscally responsible for all of the taxpayers funds. And we have to consider that even though you made a bid, is that something that we want to, um, we want to, um, award at that price point, because it may not be, um, the best thing for the citizens of Henry County and the Water Authority. So here are some of an uh, the idea of um, some of the potentially um, potential goods or services that are going to be in the LSMP program. Uh, brush care, clearing tree and tree trimming. We know that's potentially in there because we're attempting to do that now. 
fencing, flagging services, industrial products and chemicals, janitorial service. We're in the process of, of looking at that right now and pressure washing. So um, those are these are at the discretion of um, the Henry County Water Authority manager. Um, and, and it also is at um, the, uh, on a need base, um, but we are trying to fit as many um, designations in this category as we can that is fiscally responsible. Okay. So these are the exemptions and these are exemptions by law. Um, and um, I won't read all of the, the, the nitty gritty of it, but if it's a construction contract greater than 100,000, we cannot put that in an LSMP contract. Um, the professional services of a highly specialized uh, or technical um, avenue, like banking and accounting, et cetera. Emergency purchases, which uh, was quite common during COVID. And so those we have to go out and get immediately. And so we don't have the time to bid. Um, and then there's some maintenance and supports of, of computer systems and the like that are exemptions. Um, supplier inclusion program was signed on June 10th at, um, um, at the uh, regular scheduled Henry County Water Authority board meeting. And we're, we're, we were elated that that got passed so that we can do some tracking of who we do business with. It's, it simply identifies um, after we find the best qualified good labor, labor materials uh, services, um, and uh, we want to be able to track who we're giving business to. So we want to support the local businesses, all of the good things that we discussed with regards to the LSMP program. We wanted to do that. We wanted to see who we attracted to do this for us. Um, we're doing this not only for the local small business um, and the uh, LSMP program, but we're trying to do that. We, we intend to do it, not try, but we're, we intend to do it for all of our contracts so that we can see that we've got a diversity of, of, of individuals working on all of the things that Henry County Water Authority uh, chooses to do. Um, we are identifying who the contractor is. Uh, we are identifying them by who owns the business, meaning ownership um, is 51% of the business at least is owned by a particular individual. And we're trying to find out whether or not they're women owned or veteran owned or a minority owned. We have some classifications that we're looking for because we're trying to make sure that everything we do in Henry County is all inclusive. Okay. Once again, this, this, the um, SIP application is voluntary, but we are stressing strongly that you uh, fill out this document. It just um, asks you whether or not you're certified by any other entity as a minority, a woman, a veteran, um, uh, so historically underutilized, who you are, where who has certified you and um, how you classify yourself. Um, that is important because we're keeping track of this so that we can let the, the, uh, our board and the Henry County General Board know that we are an, an, an inclusive um, agency and are trying to um, make sure that everyone has a seat at the table. And so, we're asking if you have a certification from a larger entity, where you are and who you do business with so that we can make sure that you are, your work, your good work is accounted for. All right. So um, as in the LSMP program, we're trying to attract um, and promote the best and the brightest. And um, we can tell who we're tr attracting by keeping track of who we are doing business with. It is as simple as that. And we're doing this so that we can have, at the very least, by annual reports to our board to say, hey, we're meeting our goals. 
All right, so we're in the uh, infancy stages of doing um, the uh, marketing and outreach. Um, that is slow and um, tedious because we don't know, uh, we can always reach out to current vendors, but we need the, um, you to spread the word to all the vendors so that you think that might be eligible to participate. Um, we are looking into certifications for local um, certification, uh, local programs, like for instance, the city of Atlanta, the, um, okay, previous, sorry. City of Atlanta, Clayton, Clayton County, App County. We're looking for all those other certifications to see um, if we can tap into their resources in order to um, build our database of qualified uh, small local small businesses and those individuals in that 13 geographical um, area. Um, we are making the application process and the invitation to bid process as simplified as we can, but in accordance to regulatory and governmental law so that it's not a difficult process for you to submit and bid um, to be uh, considered for an award. So your role in the process is um, to keep keep us keep us honest, keep us on our toes. Make sure that um, there's nothing in the policy that's causing us to inadvertently exclude anybody. We also need you to spread the word to make sure that you know that Henry County Water Authority is open for business, and we want them. We invite them to fill out um, the LSMP application um, so that we'll know. Um, that they're interested in doing business. It's, it's like I said, it's not a certification. It's just an application. We just need those pieces. And so that is what we're asking you to do um, as um, you participate in our uh, supplier conferences. Um, I'll wait till the end um, when there's questions and answers to if, if I need to be of, of, of assistance. But that I'll, I'll send it back to you. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen and send it back to you. Okay, thanks, Joy. Uh, okay, and next up is Jeremy Sledge. Jeremy is our inventory supervisor. He's responsible for purchasing our the materials that go to build and maintain our distribution and collection systems, basically the pipes in the ground. So, uh, Jeremy, uh, I'm turning it over to you. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, I, uh, again, Jeremy Sledge, uh, inventory supervisor. Um, just a brief description of the inventory department. Uh, we're a fairly small department, but we, we really kind of span a, a lot of things. Um, you know, we help uh, again from the, the the construction side to the to the engineering side. Um, so, just I consider ourselves a service department, and so you know, everything we do is 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 out there to help people. Uh, like Jeff said, one of the things we do is um, you know we we pr provide and and procure um, materials from uh, repair materials to pipe to um, you know, copper tubing to go in the ground, uh, things like that. So what we do is typically not something that you can pick up at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or an Ace Hardware or something like that. Um, but what we're looking for is we're looking for if any businesses in the area that that can supply, you know, large construction material, um, heavy gauge steel pipe, um, solid sleeves and things of that nature that connect pipe together, um, you know, um, repair material, valves, fire hydrants, things of that nature. Um, the, the caveat of that is there, there are specifications that are required by the AWWA, this American Water Works Association. And, um, you know, it's not like you, again, you can't just go pick up these things at, at your local, you know, home, home goods store. So, um, 
what the water authority has done and, and done a really good job through the engineering department and through a collaboration of, you know, from the general manager all the way down, uh, we've, we have provided a set of standards and specifications for, uh, what we kind of expect, um, our materials to be. Um, again, as, as, um, as Joey had put it up, showed earlier, uh, on our website, uh, one of the tabs up at the top was, um, the development tab. And if you'll, if, if you'll tap on that development tab and you scroll down, uh, just the 4th or 5th 1 down, it says standard water and sewer specifications. And everything that we buy is really based off of that specifications list. Um, Henry County water is a domestic made material, uh, consumer. Um, you know, we believe in, in buying American made stuff. Um, we are, uh, we're pretty diligent about making sure that like Joy said, you know, we're, we're the best bang for our buck. Um, but we're also looking for quality and, and, and these are the things that we're hoping that, that y'all can help us with. You know, these are the things that, you know, again, you know, we're. We're looking for people who can come alongside and work with us and, and, and be partners. And so that's, that's really kind of what we're looking for. Um, and the last thing I'll really kind of touch on is if, if anyone's looking to kind of get on our, our bid list again, the 1st thing you would need to do is really kind of go through that standards and specifications list. Um, that's on our website again, under the home, uh, under the HCWA.com and then under the tab development. And then under that, it's the standards and specifications for water and sewer. Um, but, you know, again, look through those and see if there's some things on there. And if you think there's things on there that you can help us with, again, fill out that vendor application form like Joy was showing you earlier. And, uh, you know, through that, we all have, uh, we're in here in the purchasing inventory department. We're kind of privy to that information. And what we can do is when I see that and I recognize that someone's wanting to get on our vendor list, um, then, you know, I can sit down and I can call and, you know, we can vet our people that are coming on, wanting to come on again to make sure that they're going to be able to provide the materials that our standards and specifications, not only internally, but as far as like the American Water Works Association and uh, different other um, ANSI regulate, regulatory industries that, that are, um, that kind of keep us in check. So we're keeping our uh, suppliers in check. So. Um, but that's really all I got. And, you know, uh, again, uh, at the end, I'll be here for questions. And, uh, again, I want to appreciate everybody for uh, coming out and uh, coming through this uh, webinar. And, you know, uh, thanks for coming. And, again, if uh, you got anything for me, I'll be available afterwards. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. And now I'm going to turn it over to Gene Smith. He's actually sitting in my office with me. Uh, so I'll get up from my chair and let Gene sit here for a few minutes. Uh, Gene purchases our chemicals for the water treatment plants. He handles a lot of the construction projects that are a hundred that are less than a hundred thousand dollars. And then uh, he handles a lot of the maintenance and repair of equipment in our uh, treatment plants and our capital equipment. So I'll turn it over to Gene. It's having computer issues, so here we go. Um, yeah, my name is Gene Smith. I'm the purchasing agent for Henry County Water. And uh, I'm just gonna discuss a few things today here. The uh, power maintenance of equipment and basically, Repair is just a general upkeep of the buildings or grounds, whereas maintenance is preservation of the buildings and grounds on a reoccurring basis. But uh, also, I want to uh, do the uh, construction application, which is modify modification of the grounds, the structures, um, landscaping, any kind of improvements, and all of these we uh, we make a good faith effort to. To, to use a supplier inclusion program and also the local sheltered market program. And <clears throat> whenever that isn't whenever possible, because sometimes we're not able to, because it's, some of these are specialized products or services that we have to go outside the county. But if it's a local 
local vendors, we, we, I, I try to get quotes from them. And once we get quotes, we evaluate the quotes and determine if they're the best value for Henry County water. And then we always use a purchase order to purchase these. Um, and I guess that's pretty much on that, but let me go to capital expenses. Capital expenses for our vehicles, maintenance and uh, machinery. And what we've decided to do is we, we, we use the uh, state contract, source well contract and some federal contracts to purchase these. But if the local vendors in Henry County offer these products or similar products, we offer them the chance to bid on these and within the local preference act and get 5% towards it um, and get a 5% reduction or, or if they meet, if they meet within 5%, they get the bid. So we go to the local, any local dealer here in the county that, uh, that sells a, sells a similar product for a, that's going to be a fixed asset. We go to them and ask for their quotes. Um, I mean, that's about it on the purchasing. I mean, I can go on, but uh, I guess I could go to the chemicals now. We purchase a variety of chemicals and I'll just touch base on a few of them. But mainly on our chemicals, besides the certification of the chemical, we, uh, we go by the shipment. We need to have a timely shipment and coordinated to lit delivery on all of these to our plants. And, and with that being said, um, we use, um, sodium hydrochloride, it's like 12% and up to 15%. And that's the bleach. We use that for disinfectant in our water. And the uh, alum, which is uh, aluminum sulfate, we also use that in our water. And it basically, it's basically a flocculant and it makes all any kind of particles in the border fall out and it's collected in the filter. They all collect together. So we use quite a bit of that also. Uh, and we switch to a phosphate blend from Keras. We, uh, it's a Aquamag, which is a sole source product. They're the only people that make it in the US. And basically the Aquamag takes out lead and copper out of our water. And we also use another one called carousel, which is a sodium, sodium permanganate. And it's used to, to take the magnesium and iron out of our water. So um, all these products also, uh, they have to be certified. I mean, they're all certified by the, uh, the AWWA and uh, we're having these little issues right now with prices going up. One reason is the phosphates um, is because of the phosphate rock itself is, is it's used in fertilizer. And so is sulfuric acid, which is used in a lot of these production of these. So the price of the sulfuric and phosphates because of fertilizer and agriculture production are making our price, uh, they're fluctuated. But right now we have annual contracts and we're hold we're held till this summer at a fixed rate. But these are I can tell they're rapidly going away. The same way with bleach, the uh, the sodium hydrochloride, it's made with um, uh, caustic soda. It's a byproduct of caustic soda, and the same thing there. Uh, I've been seeing price increases every few months, but we're locked in at a at a fixed rate until the summer so we'll probably summer will be looking for um to to bid uh the alum out the bleach and we'll recount the carrots the sulfur i mean the aquamag now then in the wastewater side we use quite a bit of ferric sulfate and ferric um actually it's iron and it it drops all the heavy solids to the to the bottom 
but uh, but anyway, that's that's about all I got to say. I'm, I can uh, I can elaborate, but that's about it. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Gene. And I'm going to run through just some of the general how uh, how to do business with Henry County Water Authority. Uh, bear with me. I'm going to try to bring our website up and share my screen if I can. Okay, I, I think I'm sharing, and right now I'm on the procurement solicitations page. To get here, uh, again, you go about us and procurement like Joy showed, and then right over here, click under procurement, and you'll see ITBs and RFPs. ITB is invitation to bid, uh, RFP is request for proposal, and you will see what our open solicita solicitations are. Uh, right now, we've got our annual labor contract for water meter replacement. Uh, if you click on the link here where it says ITP 21-0009, it's going to open up the bid document for this. Um, I'm not going to go through all the everything that's in a particular bid document, but this on this site, it's going to tell you if there's plans involved, where to get that, how to submit your bids, all of that. Uh, this is relatively new for us. We just started putting this on our website this summer. Uh, it's, I encourage everybody, if you're interested in what we're trying to purchase, to look, to look here first. We will post more here uh, as, our, as our process evolves. Once we've accepted the bids, uh, the bid closes, and we move it to the under evaluation, uh, you see the 21-0006, construction of a monopole antenna. That's one that just closed last week. We're in the process of evaluating those bids now. Uh, tree cutting is one we hope to get awarded in the local sheltered market. Uh, and then canceled bids, I think that's pretty obvious. That That's one we decided not to make an award and then awarded bids, that's when we've made an award. You should also familiarize yourself with the Georgia Procurement Registry. Uh, state law requires us and all other local governments to, for our construction projects valued at $100,000 and more to post to the Georgia Procurement Registry. It's a free service for us. It's a free service for you at the Georgia Department of Administrative Services. Uh, you can go register. They will notify you of when any agency in the state of Georgia, or you can pare it down to certain agencies or certain parts of the state. But that really is a, gr a great service to find out when they're trying to buy things. Uh, some agencies use it for almost everything. We all have to use it for those large construction projects. Uh, and that's under the Georgia Department of Administrative Services. Then I'll go back to the procurement main page. Uh, Joy mentioned the Georgia Security and Immigration Compliance Act and the affidavit. We have a link to that on our website. Uh, it gives our, we give our mailing address and uh, phone number. Our standard terms and conditions are on the website, and Joy already went over the, the local sheltered market and supplier inclusion applications. Our vendor application can also be found here. Uh, the vendor application, 
you do have to fill it out for us to be able to set you up in, in our system. That's very important. So you can receive a purchase order. And so when you send us an invoice, you can get uh, get paid. Okay, and check back here regularly. We this is a work in progress. We we will add more content to it as as time goes on. Um, okay, the procurement submission form. This is something our IT department encouraged us to do. I know some of this. We used a different form for you to register for this conference. It can be a little clunky at times, but I know we're all familiar with getting a lot of spam in our emails. There's places, organizations that go and scrape the internet to try to find email addresses and then they get put on list and we all get covered up with spam. The way this works is you submit your information uh, attach a form to it and then click submit and that actually generates an email and uh, and sends it to us so we aren't having to post our our uh, actual email addresses on the web. I'm going to stop sharing now so I can go back and see what else I want to talk about. Okay, uh, I've been over where to where to the supplier registration form. When you send the supplier registration form in, we also need your IRS W-9. Uh, that is the, particularly for certain professional services, we have to report, if you're a, a 1099 vendor. So for certain services at the end of every year, we have to send, we have to send a report to the IRS about how much money we uh, we spent with those businesses. So we need your, IR, your IRS W-9. I will post that to our website. I don't think it's there now. You can also get it off the IRS website. Uh, the Some basic rules for doing business with the Henry County Water Authority. We do everything on a purchase order. Our purchase orders are six digit all numeric numbers. If an employee says, uh, just use Joe Smith as a purchase order, no, don't use Joe Smith. They have to give you that six digit numeric number that facilitates a timely payment of your invoice. So that's really your, uh, your vested interest in making sure you get that number from us. Uh, don't ship or perform services without that number. If uh, whoever you're talking to isn't, uh, giving you that, uh, call one of us in purchasing or, or ask them to call purchasing. Let's see, our payment, our standard payment terms are net 30. A lot of organizations say net 30 and net 30 actually means net 45 or more. If you submit your invoices properly uh, and submit them on time and they're accurate, we actually do pay in net 30 or faster. Um, on, when I shared my screen and showed you our website, our standard purchase order terms and conditions are posted to the website. Those terms and conditions govern all transactions. Um, if you want to take exception to those terms, I'm the person to talk to. Nobody in a, de in a department is authorized to make a change to those terms and conditions, only our general manager, our deputy manager, our CFO, or me are authorized to, to change those terms and conditions. And this is this is a challenging area for us. Purchases under ten thousand dollars are largely handled in in the departments, uh, unless it's a piece of capital equipment, which some capital equipment will be less than 10,000 because 5,000 is the threshold for that. Purchasing may not get involved in anything except issuing the purchase order for that. We're working on better methodologies for letting our departments know 
about who our local vendors are and they need to be using those for those purchases. That's why it's really important that you get registered in the local sheltered market because we will share that list with the individual department managers, uh, administrative assistants and users that are making the purchasing decisions on those lower dollar item purchases. When you are trying to engage with the water authority, it is very, very important that you talk to purchasing first. Uh, we're, the, we're the front door, we're the back door, we're the window, we're the chimney that Santa Claus has to come down on, on Christmas Eve. If you wanna do business with the water authority, come through purchasing first. We will get you connected with the correct person, the correct department. Uh, sometimes it, sometimes that may take a, some time and you may need to bring your patients because you may have a great product or service. It may be something we need, but we may not need it for six months. Uh, so just be patient, stay engaged with us. The best way to engage is through email. I think most of you have my email address now. Uh, also, make sure that you are reachable. And uh, when, when somebody from the Water Authority calls you, promptly return the phone call. Now, unless we say it's an emergency, the prompt means the same or the next business day. You know, we, unless, we, unless we, you sell us pipe, and we call you at three o'clock in the morning and say, we have a leak, we need, we need your help. And that doesn't happen a lot. We're usually able to take care of that out of our own inventory. But for the most part, 99% of the time when we call you, call us back this, during business hours the same day or, or the next business day, almost always uh, is satisfactory. Uh, answer your emails promptly. Uh, we, I know Gene's run into several situations where he's been trying to get quotes uh, from people. He called he call the number we'd have and uh, he'd go to voicemail. That's no big deal, but it comes back and says, I'm sorry, this, uh, this client's voicemail box is full. Please call back. So make sure you're emptying out you're keeping your voicemails empty where we can leave messages. Check your email. Don't let it get too too filled up. Um, and that's really all I have for the how to do business portion. Uh, we'll open it up and take uh, questions now. Any questions from anybody? Feel free to speak up if you have any questions. Good afternoon, Jeff. This is Sandra Rozier. Um, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am, I can. Okay. First of all, I just want to thank you guys for being so detailed today. This has been um, long overdue, and it's um, a great opportunity for folks to know how to do business with Henry County Water Authority. I'm a little disappointed that, that there's not more people um, on the WebEx or on the line. So what can we do to uh, get this information out timely? Will it be posted to the website as well as the Facebook for the Water Authority? So individuals who missed today will have an opportunity to get this valuable information. Yes, we, uh, we will post it. I'll need to check what limits on file sizes and, and all and all of that on posting it different uh, in different ways but we uh we will we will post uh at least some of this content uh from today's presentation great and then what other outreach efforts are being made or partnerships that are being formed with the chamber or other business organizations to be able to share this information with them as well Okay, we did, uh, 
I did reach out to the cha to the Henry County Chamber of Commerce uh, to help publicize this. And I will reach out to them again when we get this information posted so, so they can share that. And might I add that you also reach out to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce as well. Um, and I, I will send a, a couple others as well. So thank you for a good job today. And we look forward to many more of these. This is a good first start. Thank you. Okay, I, I appreciate those uh, those comments, Sandra. Um, that's that's very helpful uh, to know that that we're on that we're on the right track with these. Are there any other questions? Hello, Jeff. This is Charles Walker. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can. Hey, I want to say this. I want to echo uh, Sandra. Uh, I appreciate your uh, you and your team. Um, Constant, every time I called you, you, you got right back to me. And uh, we are veteran-owned, uh, small business, female, female veteran-owned business here in Henry County. And we are also partnering with the Ginn Group uh, in uh, Peachtree City there, Fed, Fedville. So we wanted to make sure that we, we get a good partnership. We got quite a few veterans that want to work here in Henry County. And our goal is to create job opportunities for our veterans when they come back to, to, to keep them uh, useful and and keep their mind set on doing something great in the community. Uh, but you uh, specifically, every time I emailed you, I, I immediately got an email back. I've been living here in Henry County 15 years. And uh, it's, it's just awesome to see that. And I appreciate all of you all. And the detailed information we got today, I'm going to pass it on to my team. Uh, and I'm, I'm surprised not more people here as well. Uh, but I, I found out a lot on LinkedIn. And I follow you guys, uh, the great work we're doing here in Henry County. And I see the diversity effort. Uh, and I pass it around. So I appreciate you all. Okay. And I appreciate it. Okay. Charles, I really appreciate those comments and feedback. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate you, your comments about us being prompt to return emails, yes, un sir. unanswered emails and unreturned phone calls are a real sore point with me. Uh, I always try, try to make a point to respond as as quickly as possible uh, yes, and that's something i can't emphasize enough with with our suppliers uh we're all we're all busy we all have a lot on our plates and it's uh it's nice to to get responses and not have to keep following up to get the same answers i appreciate that feedback and yes, i appreciate sir. you you being on here and i appreciate you uh you you doing everything you can to help our veterans when uh when they come back yes sir yeah i appreciate you and you definitely set the standard on that uh promptness so I, i'll follow i'll follow through with you you have a great day okay i i appreciate that charles yes sir uh, anything else okay uh we I apologize that we had to do this by WebEx and I apologize we got this late in the year to do this. I really wanted to do it a little sooner, but as we started to look at this back in July, our pandemic started to go crazy again. And uh, so I hope we can do we can do this again sometime in the spring. Uh, I've already talked to our manager over over water production about the possibility of rather than sitting here in an, in an office on the McDonough campus that we go out to one of the water plants or maybe one of the wastewater plants and let let them host some sort of gathering of, of our suppliers so we can see so we can show you not just as our suppliers but as members of the community uh, what the water authority does how important it is and how and how we do it and I, I always think that's helpful whether you're a vendor whether you're in the community just to just to get everybody as educated about everything we do here um, but keep checking our website our facebook page and uh, help us get the word out when we can do this next time uh, hopefully we've got the worst of this pandemic behind us i'm ready to be done with it. I know everybody else on here is, 
But if nobody has any other questions for us, um, I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you for your interest in the Henry County Water Authority. I think you all have my email address now, so you can communicate with me by email. You don't have to use that web form anymore, but I'm always open to, to hearing from our vendors, from people in our community. So just feel free to reach out to me and I'll get some of this content posted ASAP. But if- Excuse uh, me, excuse me. I put my question in the chat. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't even checking that. Uh, yes. Um, if if you have a certification from uh, from the city of Atlanta, really any other agency in Georgia or a federal agency, uh, yes, we will accept that. Please send that over to us. And uh, we uh, yes, please uh, please do that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay, if nobody else has anything for me, that's all that's all I have. Again, thank you for your time this afternoon. Keep checking our website and Facebook page for opportunities. And like I said, hopefully next spring we can do an outreach in, in person. Thanks and everybody have a great day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.